I'm Hiromi Shihoshina from Riken. Today I will talk about the spectroscopy of bound water in polymer fields. As you may know, the terahertz spectra shows the vibration of large mass moving slowly. So polymer is one of the good targets for terahertz spectroscopy because we can see the high, higher of the structure directly, such as crystal structure, crystallinity, or intermolecular hydrogen bond. These structure related to the material property of polymers, such as hardness, thermal property, or degradability. That's why we have been studying uh, polymer in terahertz for decades. Uh, for example, this shows the terahertz spectra of PHP in different crystalline form, amorphous and crystalline. So these two shows completely different spectra pattern. And we also made assignment by DFT calculation and finally found that these modes originated in the intermolecular hydrogen bond vibration. And water is also a very interesting target for terahertz spectroscopy. A lot of researchers studied about water, liquid water. And the liquid water shows two vibration modes. One is intermolecular stretching vibration, which is called S-band, around 5 terahertz. Another mode is vibration band, which is more than 10 terahertz, which is named L1 band and L2 band. So this figure shows the absorption spectra of liquid water, and here is the S-band. And we also have the tail of L1 band, like this. In this study, the, we try to measure the spectra of bound water. And it is known that the hydration changes the polymer properties. So by observing the dynamics of water and the polymer, we try to figure out how the boundary water changes the dynamics of point. The sample is nylon 6. Nylon 6 is known as the hydrophilic polymer, and the boundary water makes hydrogen body inside, maybe like this figure. Experiment is very simple. We just measure sample by FTFIR combined with superconducting volumeter. This is a liquid hair free, so we can measure sample 24 hours, 7 days. The sample is prepared like this. First, we prepared nylon 6 alpha film and vacuum dried and put this into the hydration chamber. After one week, the sample absorbs about 10% water molecules. And the sample was put in the measurement chamber and we continuously measurement terahertz absorption spectra. And the sample chamber was purged by nitrogen gas. So the sample was dried out as time. This is the results. So this is the spectra of nylon 6 plus H2O. This is spectra of with T2O. This black line shows a vacuum dried sample. And after hydration, the absorption increases. And by taking the difference between wet sample and dry sample, we can see the spectra of bound water. And this is a spectra of bound water. The spectra in pattern shows completely different from the original one. So we try to make assignment of the bound water. This is spectral of A2O and D2O. And we fitted the spectral pattern with Gaussian functions. And fortunately, we beautifully fitted the spectra with three Gaussian functions, like this. We named these bands as peak 1, peak 2, and peak 3. And this table summarizes the fitting parameters. At first, I assigned these bands just by comparing the known bands in, of the bulk water. So I assigned peak 2 as S band and assigned peak 3 as L band. 
But something is strange. First of all, the I stop shift of S bat should be four percent due to the mass racing, but it's just it only have one point five percent. And secondly, the frequency of peak three is too low. So something is different. About peak three, maybe this is not just vibration band. Vibration band is overlapping, but mainly there is another band, peak three, is rotating here. So the question, so why I stop if it's so small? And what is the origin of these breaks? So we cannot answer this just by experiment. We need computational simulations. But the DFT calculation does not help. We need ab initial MD calculation. So I need help. So then I asked Mike to make ab initial calculation. And kindly, he performed very nice simulation, which is solid state density function of theory combined with ab initial molecular dynamics. And he built a model with eight polymer chain containing 10% water molecule. And this is the result. So first, let us compare this black line with this black line. So this is a spectra of dry nitro 6, and the spectral pattern shows very nice agreement with the experimental one. And then he made simulation for hydrated nitro, these red and blue lines. And by taking the difference of dry and wet nitro, we obtain the spectral pattern of bound water. That is also similar to the observed one. Okay, the good point of computational simulation is we can see the modes, vibration modes. So this is the vibration pattern of peak one. A water molecule located inside here and vibrating. And interestingly, all atoms in the simulation moving simultaneously. So this is a highly corrective vibration. And actually, the intermolecular hydrogen bond is not so strong in this mode. So this is a peak two. Peak two is also the corrective motion. That's why the I-stop shift was small, because the moving mass is too large. So peak three. In the peak three, this is corrective motion, but it's much more localized mode. And the water molecule is tightly bounded by one hydrogen bond or double hydrogen bond. So this is a corrective vibration, but tightly bound water. Okay, so we can make assignment by the help of computational simulation. So this is not just the S band, not the L band. This is a corrective vibration of water and point. The lower frequency mode is loosely bound water corrective motion, and the higher frequency mode is tightly bound water and its local motion. And we can say there are three types of bound water, three different bound water. And I can show you the evidence of our assignment. So this graph shows the absorbance during dehydration. And I plot this, plot the absorbance as a function of time. It's normalized. And we can see that the lowest frequency mode, peak one, decays much faster. So that means the loosely bound water shows fast dehydration. That makes sense. At the end of my talk, I will show you how the bound water interact with the dynamics of polymers. Okay, we also measure the nitro 6 gamma. Nitro 6 gamma is a stable form of nitro 6. So, by, for example, by heating up, the gamma form changes into alpha form. For example, this is our previous data. So we heated up the nylon gamma 
and we found there is one peak arising at 6 terahertz. So this is the peak of alpha diamond 6. So we hydrated nylon gamma in the channel and measure the spectrum. And this is the result. So at first, we have no band at uh, 6 terahertz, but after hydration, this mode increases. And even after the vacuum dried again, it remains. So this is 9 or 6 alpha. So that means the hydration induces gamma to alpha phase transition. So most probably, the collective vibration of bound water helps the phase transition because the collective vibration changes the intermolecular, intermolecular potential. So that may help the gamma to alpha structure change. Conclusion, we measure the terahertz spectroscopy and perform the initial MD for nylon 6 and found there are three types of bound water and all modes are collective vibration for the water and pore like this. We also observe how the bound water have changes the polymer dynamics. So the collective motion in this gamma to alpha phase transition. Okay, so this result is published recently by JPCB. And actually this paper is open access paper, so you can download if you are interested. Thank you for your attention.